Hey everyone, today it's going to be a little bit of a different video for you. Um, this painting today that I'm doing um, is going to be in tribute to the late drummer Joey Jordison from what most people would know him from uh, is the band Slipknot. Um, he was also in bands like Scar the Martyr and Murder Dolls and I think a few other projects and he also filled in for bands like Korn and others. Um, but anyway, he just passed away earlier this week and this was um, one of my childhood inspirations. So unfortunately I am very saddened by this loss and I wanted to do a little bit of a memorial painting for him. Um, if you don't know anything about Joey Jordison, um, he is the co-founder of the metal band Slipknot. Um, he was also the guitarist for the band Murder Dolls later, and like I said, he did work with uh, Korn and Rob Zombie, Metallica, um, Otep. He also was the founder of the band Scar the Martyr. Um, so he did a lot of stuff, um, drumming and guitar, um, and he was a very talented musician and he, um, as far as drumming, influenced a ton of drummers in the metal scene for music, um, so a very influential person. This painting I'm making here is of him wearing his mask that he wore in the band Slipknot when he drummed for them. Um, for a long time, Slipknot, as an entire band, did not show their faces to anyone um, in the fan base or in the public media. Uh, it was a bit of a mystery as to what they looked like, and that was kind of some of the allure to the band, I think. Um, but like I said, this guy was a huge influence on me. Um, <laughs> from anything to appreciation of musical talent to even fashion design. I mean, I dyed my hair like the dude. Uh, the first time I ever tried any sort of actual color in my hair, more than just bleaching it here and there, um, was to put big red chunks in the front of my hair, just like he did on the first album. Um, and Honestly, I probably would have never been interested in anything to do with drumming if it wasn't for him because I never really noticed drummers before him. Um, and there's many great drummers that doesn't discount the drummers before them, but um, growing up in the 90s and early 2000s, Slipknot was very influential on that time period and uh, being an angsty teen and getting out my rage uh, utilizing songs from Slipknot was something that kind of just made up my childhood and um, there was something very unique about his drumming that that stood out for me and it was kind of similar to the drum style of the drummer from Korn or at least um, the snare definitely sounded similar um, and I'm sure that wasn't an accident since I know at least Joey was a huge fan of Korn at the conception of Slipknot. Um, <clears throat> but he added so much more finesse and obviously way more beats <laughs> in his music. Um, and it was jazzy, it was improvisational, it was wham bam in your face, it was so intense. And that was the majesty of Slipknot, just the intensity of them and how hard they rocked and how hard they went when they performed and recorded albums and everything. It was so intense, especially those first two albums were just so intense. And I think they wouldn't have been able to make it sound as intense without his influence. And obviously since he's the creator of the band, he's not the only one, but he's one of them along with uh, the bassist, the late bassist Paul Gray, and um, clown Sean Crahan. Um, they created the band together, so he initiated the whole thing. Um, and it's gonna suck without his influence in the world anymore. I know that 
um, I'm going to be pretty upset for a while over this. That sucks. <laughs> but um, I figured I'd do some sort of a tribute to him. And it'll be something really cool to hang on my wall. Um, <laughs> since I haven't had uh, anything Slipknot on my wall in a long time. <laughs> since I moved a couple times. I think this will be a cool addition to my room. But basically, as you've been watching me, um, I've just been laying down some black onto this canvas. Um, and then now I'm going in with a mid-tone gray that I already had in a bottle that came with the paint pack I bought. Um, I used Magic Fly acrylics that I bought off of Amazon in a large pack of a rainbow set so that I can do a lot of different projects and have a bunch of different options. Um, the canvas that I used um, was a pre-primed canvas um, that you can get at Walmart. Uh, most canvases that I see that you can buy at stores are pre-primed, um, but I don't think that they are primed well enough. So I will go in with a white gesso or a black gesso if I want to do black as the background, but for this case I used white. Um, and I will cover that in a thin layer, that's what I did with this one, of white gesso. Um, make sure it's as thin as I can get it and spread it evenly across the surface of the canvas. And then I waited for it to dry completely. And then I took some fine grit sandpaper and sanded it down to make it a little bit smoother. And then I went over again with another thin layer of the gesso and then waited for it to dry and sanded it again one more time just to make sure that the canvas was um, nice and smooth. Um, it's not completely smooth, um, like perfectly smooth. There's definitely still canvas texture there, but I'm sure if I kept going at it over and over again with multiple layers of gesso, I could probably get it really smooth, but I wanted to leave a little bit of texture just to add some character into the drawing. Um, and the reference that I used for this was actually a picture of Joey without his mask on. I think it was a promo picture for him in the Murder Dolls as a guitarist. Um, and he had his hands up like this in a cool, interesting pose. So I wanted to do him in a pose like that, but he didn't have his mask on and I wanted him to have his mask on from Slipknot. So painted that on from another reference that I was looking at. And I'm just mixing different shades of gray um, on my palette and on the actual canvas too. And then I let that dry and I grab some white paint and go over it again with a two inch brush to fade it back out to a whiter color at the top again. And I still keep it kind of streaky because I want that gritty texture. I want the painting to look kind of creepy because that was the style that he always went for in his promo pictures for Slipknot, so I wanted to keep that style. And now I'm just going in with a fine liner brush and I'm doing the outlines of his hands and cleaning up minor little details here and there and just doing some finishing work and adding in little glove holes for his arms because that was the outfit he was wearing in the reference and I liked the way that it looked so I wanted to duplicate that and you'll see I also um, obviously I added in the uh, is it a nonogram it's a nine point star symbol um, and that's the symbol that Slipknot used um, because there were nine members um, when they released their self-titled album. There was nine members, so that's, it was the Brotherhood of Nine. Um, so I wanted to incorporate that because I'm sure, I mean, I know Joey, until the end, still loved Slipknot, even though the band let him go, unfortunately, for unknown reasons. Um, he always still, to the end, loved the band, as far as I know. Uh, so I wanted to attribute that in the picture. 
and I'm just finishing off some highlights in his hair and I'm blending in dark grays too to add some streaks and shade and definition so that it's just not a flat black color. But um, I am so glad you guys came by to check out my painting today. I know it's not something I would normally do for you guys, but um, like I said, I wanted to do a nice tribute to Joey and make sure that the world knew that this dude was awesome. If you didn't know who he was, check it out. Um, if you like metal and heavy music, check out Early Slipknot, please. They're so awesome. Um, if you want to go ahead and give it a like on this video if you like what you saw and subscribe to my channel for more if you're interested. And you can follow me on my social media too if you want to check out more of my work. Bye guys.